a new face. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal Priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? Nothing about that name seemed odd to you. Why is that? The memes? What are the memes? A bit like Egyptian hieroglyphs, then. So your people make hieroglyphics depicting this accursed character, the one they call Karen. Hmm. I wonder if... No. I apologize. I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just that you've got me thinking. Have you spoken with any of the others? about how they arrived here too. I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember and see if you notice any patterns. Good, thank you. But please be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you too. Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive member of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty, always seeking out newcomers and asking them where they were from and how they wound up here. And then, about a month ago, she suddenly changed. She withdrew, stopped working and became despondent, started muttering to herself. Galerius and I visited her to see how we could help, but she just looked at us with this haunted stare, called us bloodless shadows, and told us we were ignorant of some pattern. Look, it could be unrelated. Perhaps she simply fell ill. Or, as Galerius suggested, the weight of the golden rule was too much for her. But there is a small chance that she learned something, saw a pattern nobody else saw, and that it broke her. I just don't want to see that happen to you. So be careful, will you? Thank you. Now, go and follow the thread of truth through this labyrinth, and come back to me if you discover any patterns. Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors. again. Did you find what you need? I don't, I'm afraid. It seems to me we're exiled here until the gods judge us, one way or another. I'm quite sure it's the work of the gods, which is strange because they've never been particularly concerned with our misdeeds, as long as we've kept the peace of the gods. We asked for blessings, for good health, bountiful harvest, military victory, and in return, we offer praise, wine, incense, or animals. But here, it seems they require much more of us. 
I find myself reminded of an especially pertinent tale from our great poet Ovid in his epic Metamorphoses. Would you like to hear it? It is rather long. Wonderful. It goes like this. Baucis and Philemon were an old married couple living a humble life in a small town. One night, the town gets a visit from a couple of vagrants. They go from door to door, asking for a place to stay the night. Of course, being vagrants, they're turned away sharply from house after house, a thousand in all. Until finally they come to the little cottage where Baucis and Philemon live. Now the kind old couple had very little to offer, but nevertheless, they invite these strangers into their house and offer them food, wine and a place to stay. Immediately the guests make themselves at home. They begin gulping down the old couple's wine, so much so that Baucis, the old lady, begins to worry they're going to run out. And then she notices something strange. Her wine pitcher keeps refilling itself, as if by magic, realizing only a select few possess such powers. Says to her husband, Philemon, I think these men are gods in disguise. Immediately the couple begins apologizing for offering such coarse wine and the vagrants metamorphosize and reveal themselves to be Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Mercury, the trickster god. They confide they didn't mind the meager offerings. They were just pleased that someone in the town offered them hospitality. Then Jupiter says to them, you have passed our test, but everyone else in this city failed. So we are going to destroy this place and everyone in it, except you, who we will grant a wish. So old Baucis and Philemon escape up into the mountains safely, and they receive their wish, which is for eternity together. Meanwhile, Jupiter carries through with his threat and wipes that city off the map. Some say the moral of that story is that we must all honor the sacred rituals of guest friendship, the reciprocal obligations owed between hosts and guests. But I like to think it's that we should always show compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. I'm pleased to hear it. It must be completed by dusk, just the same as any other official business. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Maliolus, the challenger. Why do you ask? All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend, unless they're running, of course. Well, you're not a citizen yet, so no, I'm afraid not. But if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. By using whatever gifts the gods gave you. Nothing untoward, of course. All of the male citizens who are willing and... Hmm. That's just the way it's always been, I'm afraid. It never sat right with me, either. There are some women who can vote, Vestal priestesses like myself, but in this case, given my role overseeing the election, I've decided to abstain. I can't allow the perception that I'm being anything but fair and independent, but if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. You can. Assuming they're eligible and willing to accept the nomination. I'm responsible for announcing it and making sure the procedures are followed. As I said, I'm planning to hold it before dusk, but I suppose I could hold it sooner, if there's a good reason. Hmm, yes. I have overheard some rather unpleasant arguments. The last thing we need here is additional conflict. Very well. I'll get things started right away.
I need to ask Horatius to escort you out of here. Get out, you horrid barbarian! Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors. Ave again. Did you find what you need? Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors. Isn't the great temple majestic? <sighs> Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. Can't talk long. Got to stay sharp, but... Uh, family's from Seleucia and Tigris. Babylon province. But I've been roaming a long time now. Even joined the legions. The sixth. One they call Ironclads. Same way as everyone else. Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Mm. Magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. If you were dealing with what I am, Salve. you wouldn't be either. None of your business. In Troiti Ipsum come in Chula. If we have to. If I did, do you think we'd be having this conversation? Hmm. I'll tell you this much. I hate the fact that my survival depends on the common sense of other people. I mean, all these people just bumble along like nothing's wrong. Well, we're one bad decision away from being wiped out. Like the last lot of people who lived here. Seems like I'm the only one ready for what's coming. Whatever that is. And when it hits, it's everyone for themselves. You've been warned. I don't know. Did you ever get the feeling some of these statues are watching us when we're not looking? Like they're waiting for something. I don't like it. Of course I am. Meliolus. Not sure I trust Sentius. Couldn't even protect his daughter in a city without sin. How's he going to protect us? No. Whatever. What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that Kulas Kubolates Decius won't give it to me.
It's too late. She just slipped away. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of silphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Dacius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule. Or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that silphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetric Kamfututo and scratching his eyes out. I wish. Some people here need proper medical care, not the half-baked, hanging-by-a-thread excuse for treatment I'm giving them. Just don't get sick or injured here. I'll do my best to treat you, but I'm out of my depth and dangerously short on everything you can imagine. A city without sin might sound good on paper, but whoever dreamt it up didn't think it through. Maybe it was an attempt to create some kind of utopia. But snakes like Decius will always find loopholes to exploit. And what can we do about it? Absolutely nothing. In some ways we are worse off because we can't take the law into our own hands. Oh no. Sorry, I don't mean to worry you, but... No, that is definitely not normal. There was one other person who claimed she could hear the statues talking to her. But that was Nevia, and uh, she went a little mad. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician. But she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good, too. Until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying. But I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues, like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace, barred the door from the inside, and nobody's seen her since. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her, because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem, a real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism. His joints are inflamed and he's in constant pain. I really shouldn't say. He wouldn't like it. And he's a little bit scary. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off. And I worry he'll end up losing his temper and lashing out. And you know what that means. I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. But nobody seems to know how to get into the palace. I'm Lucretia, and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not a physician. 
This is Nevia's clinic. I've just been filling in ever since she disappeared. I'm tired and out of my depth and miserable all the time. But I'd rather take this on myself than let one of you lot mess it up. My husband and I moved to Rome from Caesarea. He embraced the Roman way more than I would have liked and turned into an awful philanderer. I would have divorced him and demanded the return of my dowry, but I knew he would sooner have me killed than give me my right. So I waited for the right time to take what was mine and disappear. And then the fires came. As he prepared to evacuate our villa, I gathered our most precious belongings, coins and gemstones, and the moment his back was turned, I ran. I could barely see for the smoke, and the streets were full of people trampling each other. I ran for the river, like everyone else, and leapt in. The next thing I remember, I was waking up on a riverbank, not far from here. It's all right. Say what you will about this place. At least my fornicating husband will never find me. And while there's no shortage of snakes here, at least with the golden rule, they have to try to be discreet about it. Oh, this shrine was in use as a clinic long before any of us arrived here. Kind of strange to set up a clinic in the temple of the god of disease. But the god who inflicts a curse is also the only god who can undo it. So I suppose praying to Apollo for healing kind of makes sense. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician. But she was the clock until she suddenly lost all interest. In the, the last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw, and then she shut herself in the palace. She's been gone, but I read one of my patients is up. He's become so irritable that the smallest things I just know Navia would not. Thanks, I suppose. Sure. What do you want to know? Do you really want to know? I mean, if somebody poisoned her, then surely they would have broken the golden rule, and... So, maybe it's best we don't discuss it. Hemlock, I believe. I haven't seen her in months. She's not allowed to leave Maliolas's villa, and they are quite secretive. Gladly. Well, come back if you get sick or injured. Day or night, I'll do what I can. May Apollo keep you safe. Sometimes I stare at the great temple on the bluff. Ah, a new face. 
Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. You arrived on a sad day, friend. What with Julia's death? I wish we could have met under better circumstances. Well, I'm an architect. Or at least I was back in Rome. That's probably too grandiose a term to describe what I do here. Help out with repairs and try to stop old buildings from collapsing on people. That kind of thing. But you probably don't want to hear about the ingenious architecture or mysterious history of this place. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Some of these shrines were constructed hundreds of years ago, which means Romans have been arriving here for at least that long. But there's one thing that puzzles me. The oldest shrine in this avenue isn't Roman at all. It's Greek. I'm not sure. It could mean that the Romans who first started building here were just copying Greek architecture, which they do all the time. Or it could mean that there were Greeks living and worshipping here before the Romans arrived. Which begs the interesting question, who really built this place? And could it be far older than any of us imagine? If only there was a way we could talk to the people who came here before us. The stories they could tell. Gladly. Personally, my favorite thing about this place is the aqueducts. Those series of adjoining arches. They're an ingenious feat of Roman engineering, with a very practical purpose. They take fresh water coming from outside the city and distribute it all across the chasm. It's funneled below the palace and into a cistern beneath the great temple. Some of it flows down into another cistern beneath the villas. And the rest is funneled to the shrine of Proserpina, where it fills the lake and allows us to fish and farm. Hey, not so loud. Just talking about that could anger the gods for all we know. I'm not saying it's impossible. But you'd have to find a way inside somehow. Just please try to be a bit more discreet about it. You mean the great temple? This one's a bit of a mystery. Given the way it's positioned so prominently, looking down on us, it's clear that whoever built it felt it was the most important temple in the city. Unfortunately, someone else went out of their way to keep its purpose a mystery. You see, usually a temple is dedicated to a particular god, like Proserpina or Diana or Apollo. Usually, that god is obvious. But in this case, it's unknown. There's an obelisk out the front, which probably used to bear the name of this unknown god. But it appears some barbarian defaced it. And of course we can't get inside because it's locked up tighter than the temple of Saturn in Rome. And that contains the treasury. So we're all left wondering, which god is that temple dedicated to? And could it be the one responsible for the golden rule? Unless somebody figures out a way inside, I suppose we'll never know. Of course. You wouldn't believe how often the new ones ask that question. But I tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. There are much worse places to live out your days. You might have a few sleepless nights thinking about the golden rule. But once you get used to the fear, knowing that a single slip-up could cost you everything, it's not too bad. Nothing new to me, anyway. Oh, I just mean I grew up in the Batavi tribe, far to the north in Novio Magus, and learned to expect a bit of hostility. They weren't nearly as tolerant as the Romans. Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my... 
Präferenz vom Mail Company. Hey, nothing gets by you, huh? Sorry, that was mean. Yes, I like men. And when you grow up in the north as I did, in the city of Novio Magus, you expect a bit of hostility. The Batavi are not known for their tolerance. I saw enough friends killed or driven away to know the cost of not keeping your personal affairs to yourself. So I hid who I was for... what was it? Nearly ten years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly, until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world with an assumed name, my openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. Nice of you to say, but not necessary. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. It seems I was wrong. Uh, it's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. Strange bunch. They insist there's only one God, and that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? If there are any of them here, they won't admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. All I know is, if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. What? Really? I... I didn't expect that. But thanks. It's always a pleasure to meet someone so selfless. I'm glad you arrived when you did. I'd start by figuring out who the cultists are. Or maybe ask around among the merchants here. Someone who lives or works in the forum must have seen something. But if you find them, please don't hurt or humiliate them. I suspect they're just confused. Some people say it's divine, the work of a god. But I'm not so sure. It just seems so... Flawed to me. Like it's distinctly human. I mean, once you've been here long enough, you notice people doing things that just seem so wrong to you. But this so-called God doesn't seem to care. Which means one of two things. Either you don't know the difference between right and wrong, or this unknown God doesn't. And I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Do you? Good. Then I'll hope you'll agree that there are only two ways of dealing with unfair rulers. The first is to leave. The second is to remove the ruler from power. And it seems leaving may not be an option. Good question. It's best if I say no more, but I hope you'll give it some thought. Well, Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, at least he has a vision. My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. Nice to talk to you. Dooley. I live here now because I got in trouble and they... They said they had to lock me up. I don't know. 
I don't remember things so good. I think it's just because I was looking for treasure. Yes. But I wasn't. I was just looking. They said I did it more than once. But I can't remember things so good. Then they called me mean names. They called they called me a liar, Billy. Yes. They said I have to live here now and gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you... Do you think you could read it for me? Is it so? Ah, uh, my treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said he always would. But then he died. It was very sad. He said if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about assistance. But when I went up to the high one, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me, except my friend Galerius and Ek. Priestess lady. She's a nice lady. Hannibal s d said I sh shouldn't give it to anyone I didn't trust. But maybe you could help me get out of here. Then I, I would trust you a lot. Galerius already tried that. He said the magistrate wouldn't listen, no matter what. Like, Galerius? He's nice. I like Galerius. He made me a doll and everything. If you help make him magistrate, he can get me out of here and I can give you the key to my treasure. Hannibal said it was in the cisterns. I can't remember what it was, just that it was way up high and very precious. Gold? You mean treasure? My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said, he, all I remember is he's now nobody. Hannibal said, you're mean. I don't like you.
Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know, from which exotic part of the world do you hail? Then you are an explorer, like me. Wonderful. You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? My story? How kind of you to ask. I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forest. You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the Golden Rule, and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the Golden Rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? A good question, a very good question indeed, and I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Hmm, I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares, and droning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. It's time! The election's on! Citizens, we have a quarate body of voters gathered here to elect the city's magistrate. The candidates are Sextus Sentius Imperiosus and Marcus Maliolus Gerges. As agreed, we shall dispense with ballots and candidates will abstain from voting. Let's make this quick. As I say your name, call your vote. I'll start with you, Horatius. Sentius, of course. Georgius. Maliolus. Dacius. Maliolus. Galerius. I abstain. I'm just here to observe. Virgil. Maliolus. Rufius. Maliolus. And finally, Domitius. Maliolus. Who else? Citizens, you have made your decision. 
Your new magistrate is Marcus Maliolus Gurgis. Hail, Magistrate Maliolus. <sighs> I said, Hail, Magistrate Maliolus. That's more like it. Thank you. Thank you. I am delighted and deeply honored to have been elected your magistrate. And now, I make this solemn promise to you, good citizens. Under my leadership, you will finally enjoy the freedom you deserve. No more shall you walk on eggshells, fearing simply to live and breathe, because the tyrant Sentius told you it was forbidden. For my first act as magistrate, I hereby announce a day of celebration to mark the end of an era. The myth of the Golden Rule is no more. The Golden Rule is real, you idiot. For his attempt to deceive us all, Sentius is hereby found guilty of treason against the Empire. What? I have committed no crimes. This is madness. His sentence? To fight for his life in gladiatorial combat against Domitius. Here and now for your entertainment. You have no idea what you're doing. You're going to get us all killed. Wait, I exercise my right as a Vestal Priestess to pardon him. I will not allow you to do this. You're showing your true colors now, Priestess. Your corruption sickens me. Domitius, ignore her. Proceed. This is insanity. You'll doom us all. Lies! It is time the Golden Rule was exposed for what it is. A children's fable, exploited by a treacherous leader to instill fear in all of us. This is why he's in his gladiator gear. They've been planning this all along. Shut up, all of you. The Magistrate has spoken. I'm going to enjoy killing you, old man. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. You have to do something. A man arrived in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's going to break the golden rule. Fabia, but now's not the time. Are you going to help or not? Thank you. 
He's still in there. Somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Hear what? What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. The shrine is collapsing. No! Oh, God! She's dead! Did anyone see that? The whole shrine just collapsed on her! Oh, Fabia! Why... Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I'm not sure I believe that, so allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me, or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? Oh, how very welcoming of you. You want me to let my guard down, is that it? You're not going to get your claws into me. I was told Quinctius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. You say that, but if you're not a cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? So you admit you're not allowed to leave. Threatening me is not going to help you, but in any case, that sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra you all believe? You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? 
You lot are practicing human sacrifice too. You people disgust me. Of course you'd say that, but that's what your kind do, isn't it? Our God told us to do it. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. Your cultists, there's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. Very well, here's what I know. He's a 40 to 50 year old man with distinctive eyes, one green and one blue. He's also known to have delusions of grandeur. The emperor says he and his cult, your cult, are responsible for starting the fire which burnt half of Rome to the ground and killed thousands in the process. All I know, all I care about, is that the Emperor believes he is guilty and wants him dead. The details are not my concern. This is your last chance. Are you going to tell me where he is or not?